Constitution, and particularly to those who were opposed or worried about this new Constitution, that there be checks on government. Now, there were a couple of ways that uh, the framers decided we could do that. One was a written Constitution, which had limited powers for the national government. Another was through a system of election and re-election, so that the citizens would always have the ability to decide who will make laws and to change those people if need be. But a very important part of it was the jury system. It was a fundamental way of ensuring two things. One, that the citizens, the average citizen, would participate in helping to frame laws and understand how laws operate in their communities. That's the idea of deciding mm -hmm. law as well as fact. Mm -hmm. In addition, it was a way of keeping an eye on the application of the laws, of ensuring that the citizen was active in the daily uh, implementation of public policy. Those things gradually have escaped us over the years. That's not to say that we don't have a pretty faithful and a pretty uh, good democracy. I think it's relatively strong. But this important aspect of it is missing. And uh, that's one of the reasons why the debate that we're having today is so important. Would, would this help us any, when it, uh, in any way when it comes to administrative law? So much of our law now isn't even in the regular courts. So few of our cases actually end up in the jury. And, you know, you take the IRS and other agencies, we don't have a trial by jury. Yeah. Uh, Will the movement that you're heading up, Larry, help us in that way, or is that something that would come later? How do we deal with it, the problems of the administrative law that we have? Well, administrative law can, of course, be challenged in court, and sometimes effectively is. And in some cases, as in tax law, if you do something bad enough, you do get a jury, and then you can go ahead and make your case to the jury that the law is bad. At the present time, that is a problem. Wherever you don't have a jury, you have a problem in controlling the government. This re harks back to the Navigation Acts, uh, an early uh, part of our nation's history. In fact, before we were a nation, the British decided that we were supposed to route all trade through England and, and pay duties and taxes on it. Um, but colonial juries would routinely let sea captains go, acquit them, uh, for disobeying you know, the, the Navigation Act. So the British responded by inventing courts that didn't have juries courts of admiralty where they could go ahead and have trials that didn't have juries because they very well realized that if the jury were able to make its decision uh, they would reject these laws and so the same problem is here with us today and it does need to be dealt with yeah I, I think the the regulatory morass that we live in today and the, the need for administrative law cannot be uh, uh, dismissed easily I mean the fact is we have a far more complex world and a far more complex society than we did 200 years ago on the other hand, that's also one of the major reasons you should argue for a stronger trial by jury system. Because in the end, uh, it's a way of empowering citizens and a way of, of helping to make sure that most law isn't written by bureaucracy. And I guess uh, we have plenty of that today. And yeah. if we don't do something soon, I don't know what's going to happen. I think we're going to be overrun by the bureaucracy, and we can't even attack this bureaucracy if we can't get the people to speak out. If they feel frustrated with the election, elective process, this obviously is an alternative method whereby they can put restraints on big government. Ron, this is a good time for us to perhaps take a short break. Hold that thought, and we'll return with Gentlemen, we're back. Before the break, we, uh, we, we came to a pretty obvious conclusion. One of the things that interests me is, how did the whole idea of trial by jury begin? Where did this all start? I, I think that's an interesting point, because I think it's a little bit older than uh, even our country. I know that our founders were uh, well informed about it, and they incorporated oh, sure. it into our system of justice, and they endorsed it. But uh, when really did this come about? It was for a few years before our oh, founding sure. it goes, that it was known. It goes way back to the uh, English tradition and uh, the Magna Carta. The whole idea was that uh, under a system of laws, the individuals who are supposed to be uh, the objects of those laws help to frame them. That's what the Magna Carta was all about. And the trial by jury system was a way for individuals in a small town to help to decide and implement the laws that govern that town. Larry, how, how do the judges prevent the jury from getting the information, and how would this work? I mean, let's say we have this concept uh, reintroduced and it's accepted. Uh, does, how does the jury even make the decision on what they want to hear? The judge now comes up, and if there's information, he'll say, well, that's inadmissible in court. Well, how, how in a practical sense would this come about where the jury could demand or ask for or get more information? Well, we are uh, holding conferences that discuss what access the jury will have to the evidence. 
and uh, enlarging the amount of evidence and the degree of evidence and so forth that the jury can review before it makes a decision is definitely one of the points. So we've actually formulated not just a one amendment which would require that the jury be told it may judge both law and fact, but a series of them we're calling the, the Bill of Jury Rights, one of which would give the jury access to the full range of evidence they need to make their decisions. And uh, of course they would be emphasized that they could rule on the, on the, on the law as well. On the law as well. This is uh, the reason that's been forgotten and is not used in fact uh, uh, that juries are now told that they may not judge the law stems uh, from a decision by the Supreme Court in 1895 uh, called the Sparf and Hansen decision where the Supreme Court decided that juries no longer had to be told that they had the power and the right to judge the law. Mm. So it would be up to the judge. Uh, fortunately, uh, people have remembered over, over time that part of the job of being a juror is to use your conscience so they sometimes take the risk and do it anyway. Gee, what's, uh, what's your idea about a voluntary jury? Is there any merit to considering uh, making jury duty voluntary rather than compulsory? I think there's some merit to that because you're talking about individuals who have stated that they have an interest in the administration of justice in our system. Uh, one of the problems with the current jury system is you do sort of draft people and, and that always carries some, uh, some problems with it. You know, one of the, the real benefits of a reinvigorated trial by jury system along the lines we're talking about is it might remove some of the mystery surrounding the legal process. It might open that process up and help more citizens understand both its benefits and its problems. Right. Folks, our time's getting a little short. I'm going to need to wind this up. So let me ask each of you to comment on the short run for a moment. Uh, Gene, what's the next step? What's the first thing that ought to happen to bring more power to the jury? I think one of the things you can do is, in addition to programs such as this, is try to talk more about the notion of citizenship. It's a very common idea, it's a very common uh, argument, but it's not heard much anymore. And if you talk about citizenship, and not just in terms of going out and voting and registering to vote, but in terms of one's obligations toward self-government and how trial by jury and jury service is one of those fundamental components of self-government, you might begin to erode some of the mystery behind what's going on and help to improve the situation. And Larry, you've been living and breathing this issue for quite a while now. What's at the top of your wish list? Well, Mike, we've been out in the streets trying to get a law passed by citizen initiative that would require judges to tell the jury you have these powers that you don't know about formally. Um, we also, we of course then encourage people to get involved in that. One way to do that would be to contact the National Endowment for Liberty and ask uh, how to get involved uh, with our citizen initiative or with the legislative process where we are trying to get the legislature to require by law that juries be so informed. Other than that, there's a number of informal things that can be done. We have literature to pass out and some people are just standing out in front of courthouses handing literature to people and educating them on site, which seems to be working. Ron, finally, what's your view? Well, I think obviously we have to uh, have informed citizens if we're going to have informed juries, and that's the key to it. Uh, they must be informed when they vote. They ought to be informed and willing to serve on juries. I uh, like the idea of a voluntary jury. I think that goes along with uh, freedom ideas. I think our greatest obstacle is overcoming the arrogance of judges. And if we have enough jurors who are well-informed and willing to serve, I believe we can achieve that. Well, that's where we'll have to leave it. I want to thank our panelists and you for being with us. We'll be back next week for another vital topic at issue.